I condemn Christianity. The Christian church has left nothing untouched by its depravity. It has turned every value into worthlessness and every truth into a lie, and every integrity into baseness of soul. Friedrich Nietzsche. Critics of Christianity have long sought to demonize the teachings of Jesus Christ and the actions of his followers. But if one were to survey history, one would get only a glimpse of the impact of the humble carpenter from Nazareth. Jesus Christ is the greatest influencer in the whole world, and his impact continues to this very day. He is the centerpiece of human history and all truth. He is, as Paul says to the Colossians, he is the treasure of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Jesus, indeed, is the dividing line of history. When Christ was born, the calendar was split A.D. and B.C. It's before Christ and after Christ. The birth of Jesus not only divided recorded history, but his life and teachings have remained an unequaled force throughout the centuries. Christianity's uh, lasting and enduring influence uh, globally uh, is really something quite unique and powerful, particularly when one bears in mind the extent to which Christian faith has been so globally embraced across cultures and across continents. Jesus and his movement, what we call the church, have impacted society around the world enormously. In fact, it would be awfully hard to tally up the impact. It's so great. Anywhere Jesus and his message go, longevity increases, the economy improves, the standard of living improves, the level of education improves. Slavery brought to an end. People's equality, human rights promoted. What does that say? To me, that's quite an endorsement for the truthfulness because it's effective. There's almost no area of culture that hasn't been touched by Christianity. His coming has been profound on planet Earth. I'm not sure I'd want to live in a world in which Christian influence wasn't known. As the history of mankind continues to unfold, Jesus remains an undeniable positive factor in the human experience. This naturally leads us to the question, what if Jesus had never been born? You know, the idea of what if Jesus had never been born is a fascinating one. And I like to refer to that as the counterfactual world. And to tell you the truth, it's a kind of a frightening thought. I think it would be very difficult uh, for any of us to imagine and fully comprehend the fundamental truth of what a different world we'd be living in. And had the bulk of people remained pagan, the, the world it would be one in which it would be difficult for decent people to survive. Horrors beyond belief and acts of barbarism beyond imagination would be let loose in frightening ways. We would be living in a world of magic and mysticism and sorcery and witchcraft and superstitions. We would think of human beings as animals, as beasts. In many ways, society would be in utter shambles. Our lives individually would be dismal as well, living in sin and corruption and selfishness. If Jesus had never been born, this would be a world without hope. There would be no redemption. There would be no redemptive quality. There would be no outward goodness in anybody whatsoever. And in all likelihood, notions such as mercy, grace, forgiveness, and love for those beyond the borders of our own tribe would be extremely rare. If Jesus had never been born, there would have been no Western civilization with all that it's meant in terms of human dignity and charity and education and justice and reforms. It would be a dismal world. If you think of all of the literature, the art, the, the lawlessness that we would have without the, the scriptures, um, the transformed lives. All of these depend on that birth, that life, that teaching, 
that death, that resurrection. John, in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, he says that the law came through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus. To paraphrase C.S. Lewis, if Jesus had never been born, it would be always winter, but never Christmas. Despite the contributions of Jesus Christ to the world, many critics focus on a dark time in history and ask, what about the Crusades or the Inquisitions? I think both the Crusades and the Inquisition are a black mark on the church, absolutely without any equivocation. There was uh, cruelty and barbarity on both sides. No one has ever claimed that the church is perfect or that Christians are perfect. Um, mistakes have been made uh, and will continue to be made. I always like to think of it this way. When the Crusaders were doing their thing, or the Inquisition leaders, or the Salem witchcraft friars, were they acting that way because of Christianity, because of Jesus, or despite Christianity, despite Jesus? Jesus said, treat others as you would have them treat you. And no one can learn from Jesus that religion should be spread with the sword. No one can learn from apostles that religion should be spread by force. So the Inquisition and Crusades, ghastly, terribly wrong, sinful, a denial of everything we believe. And we must confess them and make sure that it never happens again. Without Jesus Christ's great influence on the development of our society, we see it would be vastly different. But there is a greater impact we must also consider regarding the life of Jesus. Jesus Christ was God walking around in sandals. He was God in human flesh, and he showed it and demonstrated it. So what was Jesus' mission? What did he come to do? He came to reconnect us to the living God, to reconnect us to himself, to make our lives whole, to put us in the position to live out our lives in such a way that God originally created us to live. So Jesus is the light of the world who who helps us see the sinfulness of a rebellious human uh, civilization. On the day of his crucifixion, the veil of the temple was torn. That to me was like a symbol of the barrier between human life and eternal life was destroyed once and for all. He alone can save people eternally from the judgment that is coming on the world, period. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to the Father. And the message of the gospel is the only good news by which man can be saved. God sent his Son from heaven to die on a cross for your sins. And what was happening there at the cross, I mean, Paul in, in Galatians says that Jesus was taking our curse, the curse of the law, for us. Christ redeemed us from a curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Galatians 3, verse 13. He laid aside his glory and his splendor to come and die on a cross in order to say, I identify with you. I am not impossible to know. Come and know me.